Yeah. Let me start with the G League. Yeah. Uh, um, so we're at 28 teams right now out yeah. of 30. Out of 30, and, so and that's 30, good. And we will grow quickly to be a 30-team minor league and one-to-one -one relationship with the NBA teams. I think our goal there, and it's something you've talked about before and something President Obama has talked about, and that's to have optionality and a professional path right. for young players. And that professional path may not include going directly to the NBA, and there may be a cohort of players who decide college isn't for them for whatever reason and want, and this is really how the system works internationally, where players turn professional at a younger age and they want to do everything they can in their power to become a great player. And so we see that opportunity in the G League. We created a, a new program last year where we have a $125,000 salary for an 18-year-old player because in the, in the G League, just to be clear, the minimum age is 18, although it's 19 for the NBA. I, I, I think that was just a first step. I think we need to sit down and come up with more of a holistic program for that group of players who might decide to come directly into the, the G League. Part of it is once we get to a 30-team league, maybe we need to have additional rounds in the draft. I mean, if right. I were one of those players, you'd want to make sure that the team that you're playing for in the G League has all the right incentives that's to develop point, you though. as yeah. a player. And I think if that G League ha team that's affiliated with an NBA team doesn't have that player's rights, and therefore the greatest likelihood is they're not going to be playing from this next year, it's not that they don't care about that player, but they're more likely to spend time with the players that they have under contract who they hope to put on their NBA roster. Because it's interesting, most people don't realize this, over 50% of NBA players have now spent time in the G League. Mm -hmm. So if you you're teach if you were an NBA coach and you have your system, you want to have your young players playing on your G like League team. Like a minor team. league baseball. Yeah. And even yeah. if you have a great player right. who is on your G League team for a year, your priority is not to win games as a G League as in your G League team, it's to develop your players. So right. there's work to be done there. So that that's something we're continuing to discuss. I, I, I actually am very hopeful that that can develop into sort of a more fulsome league, one where um, the competition will be better and there'll be greater incentives for development. To your point about the college community, I mean, the, what, what comes to mind, I think we collectively can be doing more in youth basketball. Yeah. I think we, we've seeded the market and it's, you know, I think AAU basketball and, and, and sort of all sort of shoe company grassroots basketball gets unfairly tainted. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's some bad programs, but overall there's some really good programs. I mean, we see the quality of the players that are coming to Duke and other top schools. So they're doing a lot right. But I think that we in the NCAA should come together, should be investing more in youth basketball with the recognition that the vast majority of those great players are only likely to play in college. There's just so few spots in the NBA that I think we have a, a mutual interest in starting at a younger age, especially with that, you know, again, that top cohort of players, helping them with basketball skills, as you said earlier, with life skills, life skills yeah. helping them develop into men with the recognition that the vast majority of them may have great collegiate careers, but then they're going to go on to other professions. Mm -hmm. And so the, the idea that we just leave that market a bit to the happenstance of do you have a good AAU coach, what's the program, who's funding it, I, I just think there's, there's a ton more we can be doing together. There. You know, for, uh, being in the college community, like, uh, like, who would you talk to in that regard? You would, like our, our sports run by committee. You know, there's no face. Is that frustrating for you guys to be in, in, in working with the NCAA? I, I do talk to Mark Emmert, of yeah. course. But he the doesn't NCAA. run it. Right. He's the president right. of the NCAA. Right. He's not the president of men's college no. basketball. I, I recognize that. I, I, yeah. I, I will say, I mean, he has been helpful. We've had good yeah. conversations. Then I ended up having a fair number of com conversations with uh, – former uh, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, who, right. as you know, was appointed to a commission to look out on several of these issues. So we had extensive conversations. But to your point, you're right. At the end of the day, there's not one person I can sit down with and say, all right, let's negotiate a new system. And of course, that can be frustrating because college sports are some are a very different animal than the NBA. We're at the end of the day, we're a, a for-profit business. We run like a business. So is ours. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I have no comment, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I just think it's at the end of the day and, and I'm sympathetic to the people in the collegiate community and, and particularly Mark Emmert, because I, in essence, report to 30 team right. owners. They are, we call them governors in our league. That's my board of directors. Right. And I answer to them. And if I want to get something done to the extent I don't have the authority, I go to my board and they vote and we move forward. 
the collegiate community is much more disparate. You know, a 351 D1 program. We're very programs. bureaucratic, by the way. And, oh, yeah. and, and, and I understand. I mean, I, I will say that as an outsider, you know, trying to run my own, own organization, I could only imagine if I had 30, 351 teams in my league, which in essence was what Division One is. So, and a complicated set of issues, including educating young people as well, um, programs with different goals and agendas. It, it's complex, but you said it before. I think there's enormous amount of goodwill, a great game, and many smart people are involved in this program. And I think there's more we can do to sit down together to sort of resolve some of these issues.